Hello everyone, this is Terry from Geeky Gaming TV, and today we're talking about the Galarian farms of Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos. This is just a discussion video, so I'm going to get into a little bit of a fan theory, and we're going to go with that, and this is my own personal theory, is that this legendary trio is blessed by that great tree, and that great tree is a blessing, or... Dynamax energy has caused the legendary boards to alter from what they previously have been seen as into something completely new. A subspecies of themselves, if you really want to break it down to that level. Because that's what Galarian forms and regional variants are. They're like a subspecies of the main species, which is a good thing. It diversifies the game. Typically, these three are seen as ice flying, fire flying, and electric flying, respectively. But the general consensus or view among fans is that Articuno is ice psychic because it looks like it is levitating. Moltres is fire dark because it looks like a dark phoenix. And Zapdos is now electric fighting or electric ground. These are some pretty good preconceptions or general thoughts, but I kind of see things a little bit differently, because this way, you, you still have the trinity of psychic beating, fight, I mean beating fighting being weak to dark, and fighting beating dark, which works conceptually, but you know Game Freak. They, they are bad at concepting stuff sometimes. And I'm not saying bad in the general sense, but Zacian is very still and completely outclasses fairy fighting Zamazenta. And the dragon they're both fighting is Poison Dragon, which they both kind of resist because of the steel part, but they can't necessarily hit it as well or as effectively. But this isn't a qualm about that and about why Zamasenda doesn't get body press. That's a discussion for another day. My personal thoughts are the ice psychic thing could be real, but what would be a little bit neater is if Articuno was ice and steel. Just think about it for a minute. And no, I'm not referring to this being a a tanky ice type because those need to just disappear because they're not good Game Freak. Game Freak needs to stop with making ice defensive. It doesn't help when you have so many weaknesses. But they can most definitely do that because Game Freak is Game Freak and they like to break the rules to the point of where you just say, why is that even a thing? So I think I steal personally because I notice how sharp the actual feathers of Arnakuno looks. And, and I also thought to myself, it would be cool to actually see a legendary that can take and make use of Steel Beam. That is a new legendary. Because Zamazenta and Zacian, I don't think either of them have the special attacks that to really utilize it to the utmost of their abilities. I'm not being negative about either of them. I'm just saying neither of them are a priority special attacker. Articuno has always been seen as a bulky tanky Pokemon and a special sweeper. I also have thought about Ice and Ghost since the only other Pokemon that has that typing is Frostlass. But I'm assuming that it's going to be Ice Psychic because it feels more or less like Ice Psychic. But if all of these legendary, if these three lose their flying type, all three of them are really susceptible to ground, and I know giving Articuno a steel weakness just worsens that, but I was personally kind of thinking that what they could actually 
do was give our Dukuno Levitate. So let's talk about Moltres. Moltres could be Fire Dark as everyone's in foreign because it has such a sinister theme. It looks like a phoenix that flame is reigniting and dying at the same time, or rekindling. Could also be Fire Ghost just because of the fact that the Chandelure line is the only line with that typing, it might be fun. Ability-wise, if they wanted to do something crazy, they could give it super luck and have it kind of be a, a crit machine in a certain sense. So, yeah, it could definitely be interesting seeing Moltres focus more on crits, because in the past, Moltres has been just your generic fire-flying special attacking monster, which isn't bad, but what we want to see is these Galarian forms bring something new to the table. I'm assuming Zapdos will be playing a completely different role in the situation, because I'm sticking with everyone else's assumption of Zapdos being electric fighting. It just looks that way. It could be electric ground. Heck, for all we know, they could just make all of these fairy and just mess with our minds completely because Game Freak does Game Freak things. We have Zerud. So, yeah. But let's think, what could a electric fighting Zapdos be like? It could have Mode Breaker, it could have Tough Claws, which would be really nice. And it could actually see a completely different role being played, being a physical attacking legendary board. Like, I'm using the genie trio in my mind as a concept for these guys just because the genie trio landorus thunderous and tornadoes they all play different roles depending upon if they are in their Therian forms or if they're in their i guess their reincarnate forms i guess that's what they're called i'm not a hundred percent sure on that but Lando can be a tank, Lando can be that guy that explodes, Lando can be a rock setter in Therian form, Lando can just be a tanky special attacker, or a physical attacker, um, Tornadus prankster stuff, Tornadus bulky regenerating flying tank, Thunderous Valdezerb in prankster, both physical and special sets are very good. I, I see this as a really good opportunity to, for Game Freak to really flex their muscles and change Articudo, Moltres, and Zapdos for the better by changing the roles that they play in the game. Because all of a sudden we would be going from having a special tank, or a spadef tank like Articuno, to having like a physical tank or like in the case of Zapdos that is like the the board of multiple roles special attacker special tank mixed tank uh, tailwind setter defogger whirlwinder because that was a role for a little while I think unless I'm misthinking that it got whirlwind to phase stuff now, all of a sudden, we have a physical attacking Zapdos with Bolt Beak, Earthquake, Close Combat. Or, we could have a Moltres that's still more or less the same, but focuses now on buffs, debuffs, and utility moves, like Fake Tears, Screech, buffing moves like Howl, or Helping Hand, or Decorate. I'm using Decorate as the Vegas example of a utility tool, or Ally Switch, that might be a better one. What I'm saying is, we're in for something entirely different, and it's gonna be good, 
but I'm hoping the whole situation that's going on right now in the world does not delay this DLC. To be honest, if it's ready in June, it should be ready in June. By the way I look at the DLC, there doesn't seem much to do other than Urshifu in the Isle of Armor. And battling with Clara in Filler, I mean Avery. Which Avery has a cool top hat, but Avery also has the the trap of being a psychic type trainer, which funnels him down a list of either being fantastic like Sabrina or being trash. Because some psychic type trainers don't really fulfill their roles fairly well in the Pokemon universe. Just saying. But hopefully we see a new trailer soon and get some more relative information. I want to thank you guys for watching. Yet again, these are just my thoughts and speculations about this. Please post yours down below. I would appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.